Hello and welcome to this episode of Fresh Fuel, the third and final episode of Double Black. On episode one, we covered wheels, interior and lowering. Episode two was all about paint. Dismantling, bodywork, primer, paint, polishing and decals. In this episode, well, we've got turbo fans, a track day, a bit of an adventure and an ending which is not particularly ideal. Now the 80s and 90s were an amazing time for automobiles, and an era that we find ourselves paying homage to on a more and more regular basis these days. Picture the race cars of the day, and a glaring feature was the aero wheel covers, now generally called turbo fans. Originally made to fit over specific BBS wheels and aid brake cooling, I have neither BBS wheels or brakes in need of cooling, but they look cool, and they could be a cheap way of tidying up some wheels. So I wanted to make some turbo fans for quite a while and not, not necessarily in the way that they actually cool the brakes down, more just an aesthetic thing to be honest. But I never really had a car to put them on, I never really had the time and I never really put the effort in to figure out how to do it. So I was like right, the Corolla, this is it, this is time. So first things first was to figure out what material to make them out of. Um, fiberglass, I don't really fiberglass, um, plastic, I haven't really got access to 3D printing stuff. So I was like, alright, aluminium, that seems to be the way to go. So I sat down with some cardboard and my steel wheel and worked out what I wanted to do and made some patterns and that sort of thing. And then went around the road to the sheet metal guys around the corner. And I said to them, what sort of a file do you need to be able to plug it into your computer and cut stuff out, laser cut stuff out in aluminium? And they are like, alright, we need a DXF file. Now, I don't know what a DXF file is, but I came home, plugged into Google, free DXF software, did some googling, looked at different reviews and found something called, I think it was called QCAD. And after a number of evenings and a lot of googling and a lot of YouTube to figure out how to do it, I managed to basically convert what I'd made in these, in, uh, out of cardboard, into a file, a DXF file that I could take around the road to the sheet metal guys. So uh, I did that. And all of a sudden, any plans of it being a budget way to tidy out some steel wheels was way out the window. I think offhand, I think just the aluminium cost around, well, well all cut out and all done. I think the, the bill from the sheet metal guys was about $450 or $500 New Zealand. Um, so it probably would have been cheaper to buy some, just buy some wheels. However, that was not the point. So I took around the corner, they tidied up a few bits and pieces and all of a sudden produced some bits of aluminium that I proceeded to put together. So we have the face, the mounting flange and the fins. I went with both countersunk and oval head rivets for different parts of the fans. And the rivet holes in the face needed countersinking. And then adding a bit of RTV for strength, the fins were riveted to the face. And to finish up the main structure of the turbo fans, the flanges were riveted to the fins with a bit more RTV. So I decided that with the front of the turbo fan, I want it to be absolutely perfectly smooth, as I was going to be using a vinyl transfer which would cover the whole surface, and any air bubbles under it would look terrible. So I used a finger sander, just, just touched up the top of the rivets, any that were sticking proud, and then mixed up some bog and whipped over it. I don't seem to have a lot of luck with canned etch primer. Maybe it was too cold, maybe it was old paint, I'm not sure. Anyway, I gave it a quick once over, sort of, and then hit it up with the spray gun and the same 2K gloss black that I painted the car with.
For the vinyl transfers, which would cover the faces of the fans, I took a bit of inspiration from traditional turbo fans, sort of based on the BBS RS, well, they fitted on the BBS RS wheels. So I drew it up and sent it down to the same place that I got to print the decals for the car. A bit of soapy water in a spray bottle is sprayed on first, and this just allows you to reposition the decal for a while until you push all the water out. And using a nice clean soft cloth, push the water out and those decals are in place well and truly for good. The final piece of the puzzle were these little dome stickers and they were sort of again a bit of a nod to the original BBS wheels. After much planning at the start of the project, I decided that the original Toyota Acorn nuts with the ends drilled and tapped would be the way to attach them. And aside from being an utter mongrel to, to put on and take off, they worked really, really well. And with the not so budget friendly turbo fans all finished, a couple more little things and the car is done. And the addition of the Japanese plates was pretty much the last piece of the puzzle. The car is finished as much as it's ever going to be. If I'm being 100% honest, I'm quite amazed at how the turbo fans turned out. As far as a project goes in themselves, it was quite enjoyable. As far as the look of the vehicle, I'm, I'm still not sure. Maybe a little bit lower, maybe with some lower profile tyres, maybe on the front wheels only, maybe, maybe, maybe. Either way, it was a cool project. It was fun to dip my toe in the water, so to speak, as far as CAD. And within about five minutes, they can be all off. And back to the steel wheel look that I quite like. So a couple of weeks later, the opportunity of a track day popped up. And we're pretty lucky in New Zealand that they are quite affordable. $140 for a car and you get a bunch of time running around the track. So we went out there as a bit of a, you know, a family hangout. And Heath, my younger brother, had his, I think, $500 Pulsar. GA15 powered, 1.5 front wheel drive. And I had double black, 1.5 four wheel drive. And it was a hoot. It was an absolute blast. Now, I'm the first to agree that in-car track day footage can be quite tedious, especially of an old Corolla and an old Pulsar. So I'm only going to put one lap in here. But, as much as watching it is boring, doing it is something else. They say that it's more fun driving a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And a few months later, Heath and I did another track day with a couple of Evos. And for saying that they're probably worth 20 times as much as the little Pulsar and Corolla, I don't know which was a better day. Now clearly this is not the fastest lap. None of them were fast. And it's not the tidiest because not many of them were tidy. But it was the most enjoyable and by far the messiest. Over the space of the day we both managed to break the two minute barrier with a 159 point very high and ended up within a few tenths of a second of each other's best lap.
I would say the point of the last couple of minutes is my way of saying, if you've got access to a track and you've got a car, doesn't matter what it is, get out, have some fun, you'll have a blast. Right back at the start of episode one, I had said I wanted to take Double Black up the mountains and find some snow. Well, by the time everything was finished, the snow was well and truly melted and we're in the heart of summer. So we decided to just take it for a spin, overnight trip, and see what we could find. I'm just going to whip the fans off because no sense in destroying them on the gravel. And yeah, then we can enjoy the drive and not worry about it. the road we want to go. Hold on, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Ah, are you in through to... Actually, I wonder if we can go. Because Jolly's won't be closed, will it? Hold on, let's have a look. See ya. It's about now as this episode begins to come to a close amongst these sunset images of Double Black that I begin to wax lyrical about how amazing it is, the perfect daily driver, the doer of all things. And it was, unfortunately was being the key word in that little sentence. Because one morning, not very long later, a young lady with a couple too many orange juices under her belt put an end to Double Black. You can probably imagine from seeing this video footage that it's a write-off, like properly written off. There wouldn't be many cars out there that you would repair in this state. The rear quarter panels nailed, the roofs buckled, the, the rear axle was pushed forward like it was a proper hit. 
It's easy to get upset over such a waste. But at the end of the day, no one was hurt and ultimately, it's just a car. That being said, if you have something a bit special, maybe be careful where you park it. Accidents, theft, often the insurance companies don't really share the same feelings for our cars as we do. All in all, I ended up at about net zero after the dust settled, and the skills I was very clearly honing on Double Black will be put to good use on the next car. And of course, you won't be one bit surprised to hear that you'll see it right here on Fresh Fuel. What were the costs for Double Black when all was said and done? Here they are. Okay, so here we have the final set of costs for Double Black. As per normal, there are three columns. The actual costs, which is what it has cost me. Basic tools, which is how much it would cost if you had a basic set of tools. And from scratch, which is how much it would cost you if you literally had no tools and had to buy everything you needed from scratch. Here we have the existing costs from the last two episodes coming in at 2,220, 3,230, and 3,610 respectively. I've added the wheels and tyres here just so people can get an idea of the turbo fan cost, but as I added them to episode 1, this won't be added to the final again. These are from the junkyard and cost $160 for all four. The aluminium for the fans cost me $500, that's material and cutting all included. Paint didn't cost me anything, as I had it from the car, but a couple of cans of decent gloss black might cost you $50. Decals were 150, not particularly cheap, but it's high quality and should last. Miscellaneous is rivets, bog, sandpaper, etc, etc. I'm gonna say $50 here, that should kinda cover more or less it. I used a friend's lathe for the wheel nuts, so it didn't cost me anything, but if you had to get a machine shop to drill and tap them, I'll just say 150. I got the Japanese plates from customjapaneseplates.com. They were $100 shipped to New Zealand, and I think well worth it. That brings us to the final cost for the three episodes of Double Black. It cost me, actually, $3,020. Often writing down a cost can actually be a bit scary to work out how much you've sunk into a project, but this one surprised me. I got paid out $3,200 by insurance, which basically I guess covered the actual real life costs. You could very easily argue that $180 does not cover the cost of labour, and it absolutely doesn't come near it. but. Working on cars is kind of like my life therapy, so I don't really count it. If I've been working with a basic set of tools, I would have come in at $4,230, and if I didn't have a tool to my name and was doing it in my driveway, I would be in around $4,600. Honestly, still not too bad, because after all of that, in that $4,600 cost, you would have a decent set of tools, basically for the next project. So there it is, Double Black is gone, but not yet forgotten. There are plenty more projects where that came from. Follow along, and I'll see you soon.